And we've all seen um, uh, images of uh, black blizzards rolling in like this. And this is the Colorado Sea. I, I like this for a number of reasons. One of which is, uh, you can see the altitude on, on, on this rolling, boiling uh, uh, dust storm that's coming in. Let's get up to 1,000 feet, 2,000 feet, sometimes like 10,000 feet, depending upon atmospheric conditions. Uh, the thing is, when the soil was really, really dry, um, that very fine particle of uh, soil could uh, lift very easily. And so something that might have taken 30 mile an hour winds to get up uh, uh, initially uh, 15, 10, 15 mile an hour winds um, in the heart of this dry period would, uh, would lend itself to this kind of, uh, uh, kind of a dust storm. I like to look at pictures because if you look carefully, they can tell you a lot that you might miss otherwise. And I like to look at this picture because it tells us ever so much about people on the Colorado Plains that I suspect hasn't really changed uh, today. Bang. Right here. But yeah, I don't know, a man or woman or two women. What are they doing? They're standing out in their front yard and they're looking at this. How much time do you think they have? I don't know, but they're going to have to, uh, they're going to have to get inside pretty quick. But they're just out uh, uh, marveling at this. I'm from uh, Western Kansas, and I think the analogy is too. And maybe it's the same with the uh, uh, people in, uh, in the, uh, the, the Colorado Plains today. Whenever the tornado siren goes off, uh, the first thing we do is go outside and see what's going on. <laughs> uh, <right? laughs> and, uh, and that's clearly what they've got. Yeah, there's, a, there's a black lizard coming, so you go outside and uh, see, uh, see what it looks like. Yeah, people talk about day for night. And I don't know, I, it, it's, it's still hard for me to, uh, to grasp this. Uh, and I heard my parents talk about it. Um, uh, growing up in, in Ann Best, I'm sure, uh, uh, would say the same thing. That it became so dark uh, with this dust, you really couldn't see anything. It was like midnight at noon. And it's hard for me to understand this. But uh, it's true because people say this. We have to, we have to accept what people say about their lives that, that they experience. Uh, but I don't know, when that's day for night, or nighttime coming in the middle of the day, for sure. But I like this picture too, because I see a sense of intensity and uh, speed and uh, flight uh, on the part of uh, the people in, in that part. To me, this is a, it, it, this is a, a very powerful uh, image, and I like it. One thing that I want to um, uh, call to everybody's attention on, I've just mentioned it uh, a moment ago, and that is even though you've got a lot of dust storms uh, during this nearly decade period, they're not all like lizards. Uh, it's sort of like a foggy day, you know, you've got a little brown snow or a cross or whatever. Uh, dust in the air, nasty, gets in your teeth, gets in your ears, gets in your eyes. Uh, messes up uh, the dust you just did in, in your house the day before. Uh, but uh, don't think in terms of just death of black lizards uh, one after uh, another uh, all the time. Then again, uh, you, you, do have, you do have those images. I don't know, there's just a, a great sense of power. I like to look at these images. I wouldn't want to experience the, any of this at all. But uh, to me, these are, are very, uh, very powerful images. One thing I want you uh, to, to, to notice about this particular, I mean, this is a, a, a southeastern Colorado uh, photograph, and that is, uh, look how that ground has been sculpted. Uh, that's been blown a lot, and it's been dished out. And uh, how do you get control of that? Uh, that's, uh, uh, that's an issue that is, is going to take, uh, uh, take uh, some doing. Uh, Prowers County, 37. This is about the time when uh, uh, some spotted rain started to recur in this area, uh, but not enough to really knock down all of the dust that's, that's, out, that's out there. Uh, this is also an eastern Colorado scene. Uh, I like it too. Uh, if you look, oops, if you look uh, very carefully, there's a truck coming down the road here, and sure, <laughs> that person had the foot on the gas <laughs> to, to, to outrun that, that storm. This isn't just a matter of nasty, dirty, uh, spit out crud uh, uh, between your teeth. Uh, that's life threatening, uh, to be sure, because people caught out of this could uh, suffocate uh, very easily. It did, uh, no doubt uh, about that. 
Uh, I like this because, I don't know, it sort of looks like the mountains back there, right? In, in the distance, and yet there's this very ominous, ominous cloud uh, coming over this, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this town. I think that's a, a, a Colorado scene too. And then I was mentioning the Black Sunday of April 14th. That's what everybody talks about is sort of being the, the major, the biggest, the nastiest uh, dust storm uh, of all. But uh, these images uh, never, never cease to, uh, uh, to amaze me. One of the things that I want to talk about is to give perspective to all of this um, is to, um, uh, to think about dust storms as being just a natural occurrence on the Great Plains. In the 1930s, this was not an aberration. Uh, maybe some of the intensity was, but not, maybe not even necessarily that either. Uh, this is a, uh, a region in which uh, drought is periodic. Uh, it's happened uh, consistently over the years. Uh, people that study soils and tree rings and things like that uh, can identify the, uh, the earliest uh, drought uh, about 10,000 years ago. They said it lasted 3,000 years. Well, that's a long, uh, that's a, that's a major uh, track, right? Um, uh, the Weather Bureau would start taking uh, readings in this part of the country in the 1880s. Uh, if you look at it, uh, and the meteorologists will say, now they, they don't say this, but actually if you look at the records, you'll see a major drought about every 20 years. Not precisely, but it's it's pretty much like that. Uh, so it's cyclical. Uh, you have droughts in the past, and have droughts again. Maybe a drought even now, despite uh, all the water and, and rain uh, that you have in, in the northern part of the state. When people start moving into the eastern plains, in the uh, Colorado plains in the, in the 80s, uh, this is a period of, of uh, cyclical change, too. But people that uh, start moving into the, uh, the central plains uh, identify drought from the 1860s, major drought. Uh, drought occurred again in the 70s, 80s, and a really nasty one in the 1890s. In fact, 1893 was quite possibly, the records are yeah, sort of iffy on this, but I think you can make a case for it. Uh, the drought uh, in the early 1890s, particularly 1893, was probably every bit as bad as uh, 1934, which is the driest year. 36 was the hottest year. Uh, 34 was uh, the driest year. But my point is, uh, you've got drought that is recurring. And what happens when it's dry? Things die, like grass. And if you don't have grass to hold the soil, and you've got wind, you whip, we all know what it's like out here, right? Uh, the wind blows uh, 20 miles an hour in the summertime from the south, in the wintertime it blows 20 miles an hour from the north, and it's windy out here all the time. If you don't have something to hold the soil, it's going to blow. And it blew in the 60s, we, we know this because we can read the newspaper articles. It blew in the 60s, it blew in the 70s, it blew in the 80s, and it blew in the 90s, we have a drought in the early teens, and it blew again. And it blew to the extent that you have dust get, uh, drifts from the side of the road, uh, and curbs in town, uh, you've got people complaining that uh, uh, this is a country you can't live in and, and shouldn't, and it's just nasty out here, and uh, you probably can't make a uh, go of it. Uh, so this is, this is uh, uh, this is uh, certainly not, uh, not something new at, at all.